Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how you can make Windows 3.1 look a lot more like IBM's OS2 operating system. Now this video uh, actually came as a suggestion by one of you guys on my previous video where we took a look at installing IBM OS2 Warp 4 on the $5 Windows 98 PC. If you guys haven't seen that video and if you want to kind of learn more about OS2 in general, I'd highly recommend that you go and actually check that out. But in today's video, as I said, we're going to be taking a look at a shell replacement for Windows 3.1 that allows you to uh, just give your uh, PC a more OS2-like interface. And this piece of software is called the Workplace Shell for Windows, and it was actually created by IBM developers in the mid-1990s. But the interesting thing is, this was actually released as unsupported freeware by IBM through their uh, employee written software program. So this was essentially a piece of software that was written by IBM developers, but it wasn't supported officially by IBM. And they did actually make this free to download, which is pretty awesome. This could also be used since OS2 actually contained a uh, essentially a miniaturized uh, virtualized version of Windows 3.1. Uh, this could be used in that environment as well. That environment was called Win OS2. So you could actually install this shell in um, OS2 if you want to and basically uh, make your Windows environment within OS2 look more like OS2. So you could use it that way if you wanted to as well. Uh, this was last updated in the year 1995. And as you're going to see once we actually start the setup here in a minute, this was actually really intended for those people who were kind of on the fence about OS2 or thinking about switching over to OS2 from Windows, but they wanted to really get familiar with OS2's workplace shell interface before just ditching Windows entirely. So this program really allowed them to do that without you know having to spend any money. It literally was a free program. Uh, and it, it is pretty cool and let's go ahead and just jump into it and I'll show you guys what this is all about. I'll also have a uh, download link down below as this is hosted on uh, WinWorld's website. So uh, yeah, you can actually go and uh, check this out for yourself. But we have it mounted in this Windows 3.1 VM right here. We're going to open up the file manager and we're going to go to our A drive and we're going to run setup.exe. And so this is it right here. It opens up in, you know, the standard uh, Windows, you know, setup wizard. And right here, it kind of tells you about uh, what this program is and that it's also released kind of as is with no support. So it says this program will install the workplace shell software on your computer. And uh, right here, it kind of gives you this little uh, blurb saying that this program is distributed as is with no formal support whatsoever. While it is usable, its sole purpose is to demonstrate some of the features available in the IBM OS2 Warp workplace shell. It's not completely identical. There are a you know few minor differences, which I'm going to be touching on. Uh, uh, but there are a lot of uh, similarities to the regular OS2 workplace shell. So you've got three options. You can do a new install or you can upgrade it if you had uh, gotten a newer version of this program and you're already using the older one. And you also have a language install, which as it says, just allows you to add some different languages besides English uh, to the environment. So we're just gonna go with the new install here and its default uh, installation directory is CWP shell. So that looks good, we'll hit continue. And this is where you can choose uh, your languages. So we're just gonna go with US English and hit okay. And we're actually going to go with the custom installation because this will allow us to actually customize some of the options here. So when you hit custom here, you're, uh, you've got four options here. You have migrate current desktop to workplace shell, replace task manager with window list, set OS2 color scheme as the default color scheme, and set workplace shell as the default shell. But if you were a new user and you didn't really want to kind of switch to the workplace shell immediately, well, you could uncheck this and still keep the... the uh, program manager as the default shell, but still be able to launch into the OS2 shell whenever that you wanted to. We're just going to have it uh, replace it for us because that's kind of the whole point of this video is to show you guys how this actually works. But it's also, and I think this is really cool, it will actually change the uh, color scheme of the program manager itself. Uh, to a more OS2 like color scheme. So we're just going to uh, choose all four of these options here and click on continue. And now it's actually going to install everything for us. And now it asks us to uh, refer to the readme document if you want to get more information. But it actually says to please restart Windows so the new shell can take effect. So we're going to hit OK and we're going to close out of the file manager right here. And now what we're going to do is go up here to the file menu and we're going to exit out of Windows. We're going to hit OK and go back to the DOS prompt here. Now we're in the DOS prompt. What we're going to 
to do is just type win to load windows but you'll notice that this time instead of going into the program manager it actually launches into this completely different environment and this right here is the os2 workplace shell now, if you saw my previous video on OS2 Warp 4, this might actually look a little bit different. For one, there is no uh, you know, taskbar down here, if you want to call it that. There's no OS2 menu. And that's because that this environment here is actually themed around the OS2 uh, 2.0 environment, which did not have uh, the you know, taskbar and some of those extra visual elements that we saw in the OS2 Warp 4 video. So on the desktop here, you have these four icons. You have the program manager, folder, the window system, minimized window viewer, and template. So I'm just going to go through all four of these and kind of show you what they are and just kind of how this new shell behaves. So when we launch the program manager folder right here, the first thing that you're going to notice is it does that nice animation of it actually kind of coming out of the folder and opening up. And uh, you'll see that right here, this window interface doesn't really look exactly like the Windows 3.1 interface. And yes, this is the new uh, OS2 shell here. One of the things that it does is it changes out the look of the title bar. So it makes it look more like one from OS2. You can see that these buttons over here, uh, they don't look like this in Windows 3.1, but they do behave uh, you know, very similarly to the two buttons that are over here in Windows 3.1. So this one is the uh, maximize and restore button. This one here is the minimize button. And, and to close the window, you still have to go over here to this menu and you can actually click on that and go down to, to the close option right here. Now, when you minimize a window, what it will do is actually, it won't actually kind of look like it's going to the icon. It'll just kind of go you know, through that animation to the center of the screen but the icon similarly to what we took a look at in my last video the icon will now have this new effect over it with these lines here basically indicating to the user that there is a minimized window uh, for this application and if i wanted to open that back up i could double click on it or i could right click on the icon and go to uh, close right here and it'll actually close out of that window. So this first icon, the program manager folder, essentially behaves like the program manager in Windows 3.1 because it has all of your different uh, program groups. They're just now in the form of folders, which is actually exactly what would happen to the program manager groups if you were to upgrade to Windows 95, they would go into folders. So uh, yeah, that's, that's actually exactly how it behaves here. So we're going to go into this accessories folder. So let's say that you wanted to go into here and launch Paintbrush. So let's go ahead and just launch Paintbrush brush here now paintbrush here you can tell has a little bit of a different interface this has the standard like windows 3.1 interface with uh, the you know classic title bar up here but you'll notice that and you know this was one of the options in the setup program that the OS2 workplace shell has actually modified the color scheme um, of the uh, title bar here to make it kind of fit in better with uh, the rest of these OS2 like windows and this will basically take effect for every windows program that you launch so especially if the window is kind of in the background you kind of really have to be looking at it to really tell that there is a uh, you know difference here between you know windows or, or you know that this is basically an alternative shell for windows 3.1 and not os2 there are a few other giveaways obviously os2 did not have a windows system um, icon here but this here just allows you to you, you can go in here and view what uh, drives that you have so you see we have drive a and drive c so yeah i can go in here and i can go in uh, into the windows folder and these windows actually behave like they would in windows 95 with the uh, Windows Explorer, you know, how when you when you go into a folder, it kind of opens it up in a whole separate window. Um, so that is actually kind of interesting. So yeah, here are, you know, all of your files in the Windows folder. We'll go and just close out of that. And you can see there is a little bit of lag there. And we'll go ahead and close out of the uh, Drive C and we'll close out of the drives here. So that's how you would actually browse your file system if you wanted to. You can also go into the uh, command prompts folder here, and this is where you would actually get access to the DOS prompt. We'll just close out of that. Under startup is obviously all the applications that are gonna start up with the computer. Now this uh, system setup icon here is actually kind of interesting. First of all, the actual icon itself you can see has uh, that little OS2 logo right there. That's what that little uh, black uh, square is that's kind of on top of the icon so we'll go ahead and just open this up here and what's interesting about this is this is kind of a uh, merger of like some of the windows um, settings in the control panel that you would access through the windows 3.1 program manager and there's also some os2 
uh, shell specific options that are in here as well. So for example, things like the mouse and the uh, keyboard will just open up the standard Windows 3.1 uh, settings window from the control panel. You can see that this here is a Windows 3.1 window. So the mouse does that as well. And the scheme palette. Now under the uh, scheme palette, you can actually choose between, you know, this is, you know, nothing new to anybody who's used Windows 3.1. I mean, this is the same thing. Uh, that allows you to choose different themes, but the OS2 Workplace Shell has actually created two specific themes. Um, one is called OS2 Warp, which is the one that is applied right now, and then we have the OS2 scheme, which actually is you know going to make this look more like a, a version of OS2 previous to OS2 Warp, so kind of like version 1 or version 2.0. Uh, those releases kind of had this uh, yellow and uh, bluish theme, which actually still looks pretty cool. So yeah, this would basically allow you to you know swap between these two OS2 specific uh, color schemes, say if you were more familiar with the non-warp variant, or you could also just completely uh, disregard that and switch to a standard Windows color scheme like this ocean one right here. We can hit apply and that actually will take effect on the OS2 windows as well. You can see here they take on uh, that same color scheme. If I open up this uh, you know, color palette again, you can see that uh, the OS2 windows are the exact same color uh, as these windows here. So yes, yeah, so that is cool that the regular like Windows uh, theme changer will actually um, apply it to the OS2 uh, Workspace Manager windows as well. So we'll go ahead and just cancel out of that. And last but not least, we have the system option right here. And this is actually an OS2 specific interface. And in here, you've got three different tabs. You've got confirmation, window, and general. So under confirmation, it's going to just uh, give you some options about, okay, do you want to you know, get like a confirmation dialog when you delete a folder, or when you delete files, or when you try to delete your file system. And you also have uh, some undo, default, and help buttons down here. So if you wanted to get some help, uh, this actually opens up the Windows Help Viewer, but it's actually um, pulling the uh, Workspace Manager Help document uh, into it. So we can go just to Contents here, and this is the entire Help document for the Workplace Shell for Windows. So if you wanted to get some more information about you know, whatever that it might be, this is where you can do it. So we'll go ahead and just close out of that. Um, under the window option right here, you can actually change um, some things about the actual button appearance, you know, these buttons that would appear on the windows themselves. You can disable the animation, which is actually useful if you don't want to have to look at that uh, animation every time that you open up a OS2 workspace manager program. There's not really like a, uh, like I was saying, like an apply button. Everything I assume just takes effect um, once you actually, you know, apply it. So let's say that it, like right now the animations are disabled. If I, let's go ahead and just close out of this. If I switch this back to enabled, the uh, animation will actually show up. Yeah, so you see that it is essentially just a uh, instant apply, if that makes any sense. Like you don't have to mess with these options and then press on apply button. It just automatically applies uh, right when you click disabled. Now all the animations are going to be disabled. Also under general, you can actually change the icon of this program as well. So if I wanted to kind of switch this to a, a different icon, let's say that I want to change it to this little help book right here, I can hit OK. And now the actual icon of this um, program right here is actually going to change. So let's go ahead and just close out of all these windows right here. That is everything in the system uh, setup view. It's everything in there. We already took a look at all these other things inside of the Windows system. Uh, the last thing is the minimize window viewer, and this basically just shows what windows you have minimized. And this is really for uh, those Windows specific programs and not the OS2 stuff, because obviously the OS2 workplace shell stuff actually goes um, you know, if you minimize, like, let's say that I have this window open and I minimize it, well, it's actually going to go to its specific icon here, just like an OS2. Well, with the Windows stuff, obviously Windows, when you normally minimize, uh, like, for example, Paintbrush right here, it normally goes down to the desktop in the bottom left corner. Well, in this new OS2 Workplace shell, it actually goes to this minimized window viewer, which is basically a dedicated program for viewing all of your minimized windows. So if you wanted to, you can actually move this down here and uh, kind of have it in the same spot. Uh, like you would have all of your minimized windows uh, show up in Windows 3.1, uh, you could actually just kind of have it down here to make it behave a little bit more like Windows 3.1. And last but not least, we have this templates menu right here. And what this allows you to do is, uh, well, you know, from this menu right here, first of all, you can actually modify these uh, 
actual templates themselves right here, changing the name and the icon of them. But what you can do, and it's actually kind of interesting because the way you actually drag icons around on your desktop is not by left clicking and holding like you would normally do in Windows and OS 2. You have to actually right click the icons and hold them. That's how you actually move them around. So what you can do with uh, these templates right here is let's say that you want to create a uh, you know shredder icon on your desktop. You can uh, right click this icon, continue holding your right mouse button down, and then drag it out onto the desktop here. And it will then bring up that same settings menu. You can change the name of this if you want to. We're just going to close out of it. And now we have a new shredder icon on our desktop. And this acts in some ways like a recycle bin, but it doesn't really like keep the uh, whatever that you drag to it in here. So like this program icon that I have on, on the desktop, if I right click on it and you know want to want to drag it over here if I drag it to the uh, shredder icon it's just going to say are you sure you wanted to delete it and hit yes uh, so there's no like recycle bin where the, I could then go in and actually recover that file it just permanently deletes it uh, so that's kind of how the uh, you know uh, shredder behaves here same with the drive I can you know do this icon and I can choose to have a you know either my uh, floppy drive or my C drive on my desktop but yeah here is my drive C icon that I can move around and just you know position wherever and I've been noticing that that the system will occasionally kind of lock up for a brief second or so when you're at like see right there like I was trying to move the icon and it just completely locked up as it was trying to open up the uh, right click menu and so yeah now I have a um, icon that I can just you know very conveniently use to open up uh, and, and view all the files that are on my C drive and that's basically how all of these uh, you know templates work up here so you can do this to create a folder a uh, actual file uh, or a program icon so we can just go ahead and close out of the templates you can see that I was kind of messing around with some previously but this isn't everything I mean that's kind of everything that we've seen on the desktop so far but there's actually a little bit more and like I said there's no taskbar or start menu if you want to call it that in this uh, you know, workspace manager version and in this release of OS 2, uh, OS 2, 2 2.0 didn't really have like a taskbar either. So a lot of your settings and, you know, other options were actually contained in the right click context menu. So if I actually right click here, you can see that this is where you actually go to uh, shut down and actually log out of your session. Um, but you can also go to open here and you can actually like have a very quick uh, access to the, uh, you know, settings menu. But you can also hit settings down here uh, and you know go into the settings option and yeah so i just checked and actually going to open settings and just clicking settings here actually does the exact same thing but this settings menu right here actually pertains to the workplace shell itself in all, in a lot of ways so it's actually where you can change things like the font you can change the background image so if i want to change this color uh, here, let's say that I want to change it to like a red color. I can do that. Now it's red. I can uh, uncheck color only and actually choose a file if I want to. So if we wanted to kind of uh, use the uh, Windows logo here on our OS2 desktop, we can do that. Uh, we can change it to a normal uh, image or a, a tiled image um, under window, you know, so th this is basically just all options that actually pertain to uh, the workplace shell itself. I've probably called it workspace shell a couple times too in this video, but it is workplace shell. So if I said workspace shell before in this video, which I've probably done at least one time, uh, just know that it, the proper name for it is the workplace shell. Um, and under, you know, uh, credits right here, this is actually the list of the people who actually you know, created this. There is one uh, lead designer and uh, programmer, but you actually have some other, uh, you know, you have a, a help file author and some uh, translation people as well. So yeah, it does look like that this was kind of solely developed by this one person right here, which is pretty, pretty awesome. So that is the, uh, you know, settings, you know, everything in the uh, settings menu right here. You can see that it's kind of lagging out here. This is something that I've been noticing is for, for whatever reason with this right click menu, it kind of freezes the system, actually causes it to uh, lock up very briefly. Um, you've got a shortcut to the help documents. As I said, you have shut down and you have a, a you know, option to go to the system setup, which we took a look at before. That's actually going to open up the same thing you can get into from Windows System. Uh, you also have a find option, a select, sort. You can actually sort your icons by, you know, name, type, a couple of different options there. Uh, same with arrange. You can uh, arrange everything. 
Uh, so you see when you do that, it actually arranges it, you know, right across the top. You can hit save desktop and that will just basically save your, you know, all of the open windows to when you actually were to close out of your session. Uh, it would actually, when you log back in, keep all of the windows opened up exactly like this, which is pretty cool. Uh, run basically acts like a run command. So like if I want to, um, I can run... Uh, prog man here and now I've actually uh, launched the Windows 3.1 program manager so yeah that is a very easy way of just launching the program manager if you kind of were stuck or you know were having trouble figuring out the OS 2 interface you could very easily go back uh, to the you know OS or, or uh, you know to the Windows program manager interface and so yeah guys that is pretty much it for the uh, IBM OS2 workplace shell interface for Windows 3.1 when you actually want to close out of this like I said all you have to do is just right click anywhere on the desktop and wait for the right click menu to load go down to shut down and uh, when it comes up, it will actually ask you if you want to save the current desktop configuration. We'll say yes. And now it's actually going to log out of this for us. Now, if you want to actually change back to you know the Windows 3.1 program manager, um, there's actually no way to do that from within the workplace shell. What you actually have to do is modify your uh, system.ini file. So I can type in here, uh, edit. Um, uh, just kind of forgive me, I'm typing with one hand here. Uh, I can do edit system.ini, press enter, and right down here where it says shell, you can actually change this to instead of, you know, using the warp shell, you can actually have it use uh, we'll Windows, and you want to type in frogman.exe. And now when I exit out of this, we'll save changes. Now when I launch Windows, it's going to be back to the standard, you know, program manager environment that we're all used to. So yeah, that is the way you actually have to, if you want to swap between uh, program manager and the uh, workplace shell, you actually have to manually edit your system.ini file. There's no way, like the IBM workplace shell doesn't actually give you an a, uh, option after the setup wizard to kind of um, automatically switch back and forth between the too. So that is one thing that you actually have to do yourself. But overall, guys, I am very impressed with this program, especially the fact that this was free. I mean, like I said, this is this was and still is a free piece of software. IBM has actually made this, as far as I understand, they have uh, made this program open source now. Uh, they have actually released the source code to the public, which is pretty awesome. So, you know, we might see like some forks of this in the future. Who knows? But yeah, like I said, I mean, this is just a very, uh, very cool piece of software. It's a very easy way for you to either you know start to learn the OS2 interface if you were thinking about switching over to it or if like I said if you were an OS2 power user and really wanted to get that same interface on your you know secondary Windows computer that you had at home or you know whatever uh, you could very easily you know just use this and you know kind of feel at home but yeah guys there you have it that is a uh, very in-depth look at the IBM OS2 workplace shell for Windows 3.1. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video and if you want to see more like it, definitely be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Uh, be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever that I upload a new video, which I do every single week on this channel. And uh, also be sure to you know let me know your guys' thoughts on this program down in the comments below. Is this your first time you know hearing about this program or have you actually used this before uh, in the mid to late 90s? I definitely love to hear what you guys have to say. And uh, as always, I just want to thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.